Guys, welcome to episode 23. That's like we're half a year old almost, is it? Are we half a year old? Not yet. 26? 26. I think 26 is our, yeah, 26 is half a year. Well, F it, we're celebrating early with Andrew is living himself, you guys. How are you guys doing? And Andrew, how are you doing? Dude, I'm so good. Thanks so much for having me here. Dude, I'm super excited. Guys, if you don't know what this podcast is about, it's where I get other creators from around the internet on the show, and I ask them how they got to where they are, the things they had to do, the people they had to kiss, so on and so forth. And Andrew, I know you've done a lot of kissing, so let's get right into it. You know, it's easy to talk about the first question. The first question is the easiest, is what type of creator are you? So I have a podcast called The Happy Hearthstone, and that's my main creation out there. Um, so uh, it's a podcast about Hearthstone. It's got a pretty heavy emphasis on the community. It's been around. It's the longest running Hearthstone podcast out there. So it's it's been around for a hot second. Um, and that's uh, yeah, that's my main my main baby right now. And how do you do one episode a week? Um... And w- yeah, we, like, like, tell us about it. Like, uh, you, you were telling me earlier that you always have different guests on it, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. And you're the yeah. only mainstay. Do you have more than one guest usually, or is it just one? Uh, actually, so since the very beginning, it's always been just members of the community who come on, and it's been two people an episode. Uh, so I'm, I'm the only host, the only voice that you'll hear on every episode. Um, before uh, before I came on and took over the show, it was uh, every other week the uh, the show would release with a mm-hmm. member of the community. And then uh, about, uh, I think it was, yeah, it was 10 months into me hosting the show. Um, I, I had been on a network, or the show had been on the network since the very beginning, and that network dissolved. Um, the creators were uh, gracious enough to give me full rights for the show, and so I launched Patreon. And on the Patreon, of course, people have been wanting weekly episodes since the show started basically and so i made that one of the goals we were able to hit it in uh, just a few months which was insane so now uh, i'll do some solo episodes in between those community episodes there are and, and because you asked i have to go to the extremes also there have been two episodes with more than two people on it oh wow! one was wow. one was the 50th episode where i think the original host josh i think he had 10 co-hosts on that episode it was something insane. It was actually listenable, which is impressive, honestly, on a lot of fronts. And then uh, I had an episode with my friends Wicked Good and Ridiculous Hat, who came on to talk about uh, how to get to legend. And we just did a brain dump for like an hour and a half of everything we would tell somebody uh, about how to get to legend in Hearthstone. So, uh, so yeah, those are some of the special yeah, so, episodes. So, guys, there. obviously his, his podcast is Hearthstone uh focused you know um we do love hearthstone here uh and um you know i'm really excited because you were telling me earlier that you guys do uh, a big celebratory podcast for when you the, all the cards are revealed yeah so like all the hearthstone pie i mean really a lot of uh games that you know have set releases and stuff you know uh, the review season is always a really exciting time and every show kind of ha- does things a little bit different we're one of the few shows, I, I don't think we're the only, I think we might actually be the only one now who we wait until after all of the cards have been revealed. And then uh, me and Wicked Good, uh, he'll come on. He's, he's the recurring uh, review host with me. <laughs> and we'll go on and do a full deep dive into all 135 cards. We split it up into two episodes that are three hours long each, give or take. Yeah. Uh, he he tends to like to talk about priest cards a little bit, so you know we try and uh, we try and make it three hours. So those those are really special episodes that we really always look forward to every every season. And so far, what was your favorite set? What was the favorite set that came out? Oh goodness, I I you know I started playing right when Next Ramus released, which was the very first adventure. Um, I think so much has changed since then. If I were going to pick a favorite, though, it would probably... I have to say that I think that with Knights of the Frozen Throne, they got a lot of things right. Uh, They got a lot of flavor right because, you know, introducing hero cards and Death Knights was a lot of fun. Um, But then far beyond that, there were a lot of cards in that set that really just felt... uh, you know, living dead ish, and uh, obviously the Lich King them, himself they got right because he was a big, crazy, strong minion. 
uh, that didn't break the game. Like, uh, you know, sometimes you got to be nervous about a little bit. Well, there's so I... something like 49% of decks run them. It's crazy. It's crazy. And yeah, it's funny I mean, because all... that, sorry, that's the, that's the set. Like I, I went away from Hearthstone for a little bit there, like a little bit. I still played, but not serious. And uh -huh. then Knights of the Frozen Throne came out, and I was like, okay, I'm back in. I really am interested. And what was really cool was um, I only had, I think, like, I could only buy 30 packs or something. I was, mm -hmm. My funds were really low. And I got, sure. I got like, nine legendaries in 30 wow. packs. It was, it was honestly the most disgusting uh, uh, pulls ever. <laughs> and one of them was Lich King. So yeah. I was super pumped. And uh, I was go, back man. in. Yeah, so I've never had that RNG ever uh before but it, it was good uh so doing doing a podcast um you know with uh, different guests and everything is it hard mm -hmm. sometimes to get chemistry with that person is it sometimes like you have to force some stuff yeah you know i it it really is all over the i mean i i'm sure it's no surprise to anybody that i i probably had so in the year and a half i've been running it I mean, that's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 35 different guests, maybe maybe a little less than that. So the the uniting thing is obviously we all love this game. So that's a great place to start. Um, what's really fun is that typically that guest, I'll really let them uh, be in the driver's seat for what the episode's going to be about. So whatever topic is interesting to them, maybe there's a deck they really enjoy playing or honestly, especially in the past several months, it's been a lot of stuff outside of Hearthstone that oh, still really? plays into the life of a gamer that's really been our main conversation topic. So uh, I, I think that it's it's helpful that they really get to define the direction of the show. Uh, they're, they're all listeners, so they know the show really well and they know what to expect thematically, format-wise, and everything like that. So we've got enough going for us in common that it... it Honestly, I don't think, especially this year, I haven't had any episodes I would call difficult. Even the the very few where, yeah, there's a chemistry issue or something like that, uh, we're still able to put something out that we both uh, really love and, and are proud of at the end of the day. So I think that involving the community to create the content is really what's uh, what makes it so exciting and fun and possible for so many different guests to still make it, uh, keep it what it is. Taking over a podcast that's one of the longest running podcasts for Hearthstone is is probably really stressful, really nerve wracking. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you you want to make it your own, yet you want to make it the same. You know, you want to do a fine mm -hmm. balance of it. Yep. Uh, how do you go about making it your own, yet staying true to to the core values of the community and the and, and the podcast? Well, one thing that plays to my advantage is that I was a listener of the show long before I was asked to take on uh, the reins. So uh, the Happy Hearthstone, I started listening to back when I started playing Hearthstone and didn't have any friends who played Hearthstone. And podcasts, sometimes you go to because you want some friends who are talking about the stuff you wish you had friends to talk about. Oh, and for so, sure. And so Josh became sort of like a friend. Uh, he, he was the, the founder of the Happy Hearthstone. And somebody that I really enjoyed listening to at any time a set was released or, uh, you know, the different topics that people would come on the show about. So uh, having listened to it, I understood what it was about big time. But you're absolutely right that it was it had me shaking in my boots when he asked me to take it on because it's like, yikes, I've got big shoes to fill. Josh was a um I don't necessarily want to call him a kingpin because I feel like in the community, no one's like unapproachable, you know, yeah. but a lot of people love Josh. They love the show because of what he had did. So it was very intimidating to say, uh, okay, am I, am I able to do this? And I think it's a moment a lot of people face in like mentorship or, you know, things similar to that where somebody says, Hey, I believe in you and I believe that you can do this. And Josh is the person who would value this show more than anybody because it's his baby. He started it. He created the community around it. Uh, and he had to sit through the difficult times that all of us content creators do where we wonder if things can work out. And he saw things through and he saw things grow, you know. So for him to come to me and say, I trust you and I really think that you could keep this going in the right direction. I, at some point, I had to shut down my own inner, uh, inner well, dialogue and just yeah. say, I trust him enough that he's not playing games with this. And, and maybe there's something even in myself that I don't know is there. So uh, 
that's I that's something that applies far outside of the podcast realm. But it really was something I had to put a lot of stock into during that. What, during what that were time some time. of the fumbles you had to go through? Do, like obviously, obviously you're new to podcasting. I'm sure uh, mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff for you to learn. What were some of the big hurdles that uh, that came and you didn't? Maybe so. I'll, I'll break this into parts. Sure, sure. Some problems maybe you didn't see coming and didn't see that were going to be a problem, and just maybe some general problems that were like, ah, yeah, I saw that coming, but it, it, I had, I dealt with it. Sure. Um, I think that I think that I assumed that things would just go smoothly. And that's a that's a bad assumption when you're in the driver's seat of just about anything. Um, but especially with as many guests as I was having and different people who were coming on, I realized that I really quickly needed a set process for walking th- people through, hey, here's what you should expect. Here's how we can communicate. Uh, here's what I'll need from you when we record, all that kind of stuff. And uh, even some best practices afterwards for here's, uh, you know, if you'd like to share it, here's how to do it, you know, so simple stuff like that. But I, I think I assumed that everyone was into the show like I was back then. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we always have an open uh, open call for anybody who wants to be on the show. So every now and then there would be somebody who came on and uh, didn't know everything as intuitively as I did. And for the host of the show, that's probably the way that it should be, that everyone else should be less in tune with it. Yeah. So I think I learned really quickly that, okay, I need to really uh, create a process. I need to help them understand the process. And I need to be really gracious when with them and with myself when things don't work out perfectly, right? Uh, because we spend way too much time beating ourselves up over things that really don't deserve our mental bandwidth or physical bandwidth sometimes. So um I, I think that that was the stuff i had to learn pretty quickly yeah that's something like uh you know it, it, it's it's super difficult like um that's something i've always been very put off about uh before mm-hmm. i've done all these podcasts and stuff i started one with a buddy of mine and what i what i didn't want was a vet, like the fact that i had to rely on someone else I didn't. Sure. I don't like that because my ex- expectations for how I am and everything and like and my timing, like how, what time I can be doing this, it uh-huh. changes. It's really difficult to do it with a partner. Uh, I just started yeah. the new one with Rod and Saucy uh, Geek Aid, but mm-hmm. the, that's I've, I've I've smoothed that out. We've got something going. I finally trust uh, the people, and it's not that I didn't trust him at all. Uh, it's just I just didn't trust myself and how I was going to do things and. I think when when you're a content creator, you put so much pressure on yourself, and when you can't control certain aspects of this content that you're creating, it drives me at least nuts. It really does. Yeah. It, it, because I want to be in the driver's seat. I, you know, right. like the show. You know, it's always a guess, but I'm in control. Like this is, you know, <laughs> right. the, these are the kind of questions here. I'm going to interview you. You're not really, uh-huh. you know, we bounce stuff back and forth, but it's generally my vision of a show. So when you told me that you give the reins to someone else on the show, how crazy of a feeling is that? Like (laughs) that must be like, uh, it's tough. I'm sure it's very tough. And here's what I don't do. I don't say, Hey, you figure that out. I'll see you on the call. Yeah. That's not what I do. There are there are times when like I have a relationship already with the person who's going to be the co-host. I know them well enough that I can trust them in that capacity. That's rare, but it does happen. Most of the time, what I need to do, especially with people who maybe are listeners, they've never been on a podcast before. I love I love it when those people come on the show because that's actually the first time I was ever on a podcast was when Josh had me as a co-host on the Happy Hearthstone long yeah. before I ever took it on. So uh, so I love having that open call, but. I realize I need, I need to work with them through that. So I'll always ask them, hey, do you have any ideas for what you'd like to talk about? A lot of times they will have something in their mind. Um, you know, one time I had a guy talk <laughs> tell me, I want to talk about happiness. I was like, okay, that's that's appropriate, I suppose, for the happy Hearthstone. Yeah. But this is one of those topics that it's like, do you want to talk about what makes you happy when you play Hearthstone? Do you want to talk about happiness for gamers, happiness outside of that. And he was like, well, I, I heard this quote. I, he had heard something from uh, Joe Rogan's podcast. He was like, yeah. I really wanted to talk about how this relates to gamers. 
Like, awesome. Okay, I'm all in on that conversation. But what we need to do is we need to kind of delineate that, come up with some talking points, maybe a few bullets around that, and that'll help guide our conversation, you know? So it's just talking through and helping them sort of get their uh, get their wits about them. Most of the time, it doesn't take a ton of, you know, I don't have to, you know, schedule a deep dive session with them yep. over, you know, what the topic is going to be You don't have a free meeting or something. No, right? no, no, no. But we can talk enough through Google Docs, emails, Twitter, whatever the case may be, and get to a place where we feel good about what's there. And then uh, we see what chemistry uh, goes to play. I certainly do every now and then wonder, this could go terribly wrong, you know, but I think if you don't feel yeah. that way every now and then, you're not risky enough. So, uh, yeah. I'm all about you know if you ask anyone i'm all about throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks i think that's the only <laughs> way that's the only way for a you to grow as a as a content creator guys is uh -huh. um okay uh you have a goofy stupid ass idea do it just try it Absolutely. like what's the worst that can happen i just started doing uh, a meme the thing where um i have uh it's called hulk out so when I'm do when I'm it doesn't matter what game but mostly Hearthstone of course because you get salty in Hearthstone right um, that happens <laughs> yeah so exclamation point Hulk out starts this um, like a, remember the 1970s Hulk yeah, super yeah. low budget so a clip yeah. of that shows up and then I have a hot button where I turn green so I go click it on and off where I go start going into the Hulk and like <laughs> in my head it was stupid. And I didn't know if I would like it. I didn't know if anyone would like it. And guess what? People sure. love it. And yeah, it's now it's part of the thing, you know, and, and like and the same thing with how I do commercials. I don't know if you know, I do commercials um, yeah. in my stream. So that's, that's just something I threw out there and you just kind of see your audience will tell you what they like and what they don't like. And trust mm -hmm. me, they'll tell you it very fast. Yes. And sometimes maybe too fast and too uh, harshly, but at least, you know what, it's unfiltered, uncensored, kind of like, hey, I hate that. Or, you know what, you can also do it by no one's watching it, especially YouTube mm -hmm. content, right? I don't think yeah. one or two shows really, I don't think one or two shows would really show if it's going well. Um, I think if you're starting something on YouTube, it's more of like the community telling you if they like it instead of no one watching it because not many people watch it's so saturated right youtube so saturated yeah. and yeah. you know what the podcast scene's very getting saturated mm -hmm. and yeah. and it's very tough so it's kind of good that you have the brand and that lineage that dynasty behind you you know mm-hmm yeah, it's, uh, it's 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 something I never take for granted because there's always something to being first to market with any entrepreneurial idea that gives you sure. a, a, a leg up. It doesn't mean, make it impossible for anybody, but it just means, you know, I mean, Hearthstone is not the game today that it was three years ago. No. Or, uh, you know, so the long, but the longer that you wait to try for something that you're really passionate about, that you really love, that you really believe in. Uh, the harder it's going to get. So it's never going to be easier than it is today to take a step of faith and try something new. What I always say is if you start it tomorrow, you're a day behind now. You know what I mean? Like Absolutely. if you want to stream, you want to do a podcast and you're like, you know what? I'll do it next week. Well, guess what? You're a week behind now. So <laughs> right. just, just start it right now. And that's all it is, right? Uh, I I'll scream from the rooftops. I started on a Toshiba laptop. That didn't stop start stop me from streaming, and I get it because I get arguments about how uh, I get arguments now that oh well streaming you know back then because I've been streaming almost two years you know that was acceptable, it wasn't acceptable you know I just did it and then <laughs> and then you know I, I I think it doesn't matter what kind of piece of garbage you have, just seeing if you can do it is a big thing and same thing with podcasting because I think you'd you'd be the bearer of this one. Um, and I'm really bad with, with creator investigator. The most important thing is weekly here. It comes out on this day. You can trust me. You can count on me that every, every week on this day, you're going to have a new episode for work, for mm -hmm. the drive, for transit, anything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I would modify it a bit. I think that weekly is a really good thing to shoot for, but if that's something that's unrealistic for you, being consistent is the most important thing. So, you know, I monthly, you're going to fall off people's radar a bit. I mean, you know, I, I stream on Twitch here and there, but I don't put a lot of my effort into it. It's more for fun rather than an yeah. actual 
uh, you know, I want to grow an audience and stuff. And that's because it's something I'm very inconsistent with. Do I have time this week? Oh, I guess I can do this, you know, but if I treated my podcast in the same way, there's no way I would have any kind of listenership for that. Uh, you know, so you have to commit to something that you know that you can follow through on. You probably even want to push yourself beyond what you think is possible because, um, since starting the Patreon, uh, my first goal or uh, one of the first things I did was do the weekly episodes. But then another thing I added on was exclusive weekly content for uh, for people Patreon. who were patrons yeah. for the show. And I started out thinking maybe I can do a blog a week. I'll try that. Uh, what I started doing, though, is a video a week. And I found out people really liked the engagement from that video but it's a lot of extra work to do a podcast a week and a video a week. But I pushed myself because I thought, you know, if this drives people uh, to stay engaged, if it's something that's valuable for them, if it's something that's enjoyable for them, and I'll know that if they're contributing to the Patreon or not, yeah. then I'll find out pretty quickly if this is something that I'll, I'll keep doing. And um, thankfully, a lot of people have come out and it's been great to be able to create more because of how they're, uh, how they're given for that. What do you use to edit videos with? iMovie. I move the most okay. professional, high cost, <laughs> high bar. No, I honestly like I move. I actually got my degree uh, in college in broadcast and electronic media yeah. uh, with an emphasis in audio production. But I had to take a lot of video production classes, too. So I've used Final Cut Pro. I've used Adobe, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. But uh, for what I do. Yeah, it and really, that's, what, you that's the important part, that. right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's like I said, the, like that goes for streaming and everything. It's like you don't need the 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 X split. You don't need the you know the two thousand dollar graphic card so you right. can run a whole bunch of stuff on the screen and stuff. You need basic bone stuff and then eventually work up to it. Because I think the mm -hmm. the like imagine you went out and bought Adobe Premiere or the right. license for a year for it being like okay i'm gonna do this weekly i might as well get some good editing software and then three weeks later everyone drops off of it and then you're like i'm in the hole a lot of money right terrible investment yeah yeah exactly and i think that's 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 the scary side of content creation i see right now mm -hmm. is a you talk to everyone in school instead of saying they want to be a rock star a firefighter all that stuff it's i want to be a youtube star i want to be ninja <laughs> right Right. And the other thing is people that get into this, they spend a lot of money before even broadcasting their first stream. And mm -hmm. not is that that's not bad. I, I don't I don't uh, deter people from doing that. Like, if you think that's your calling, dude, you're going to get a leg up. You're for sure going to get a leg up. But um, it, it's tough. It's very, very tough. And I know it sounds like you would just be playing video games like you do every night, but just streaming them. It's it's night and day, and I'm sure that's like you with talking with your buddy and talking about Hearthstone. It's very different from podcast right. form to uh, just shooting the shit out at the bar, having a, a pint or something. Exactly. There's no expectation when you're hanging out with your buddy talking about a game, yeah, right? Yeah. But when people are downloading an episode, when they're coming back week after week, even when they're just checking you out for the first time, there's a level of, I want this to be entertaining. I want to learn from it. I want to have fun. Uh, any number of different things based off the goals of the show. But there is an expectation there. Streaming on Twitch, yeah, you can't just munch on Doritos and drink Mountain Dew the whole time and just play whatever you want. Like you have to interact with people. You have to have some fun. You have to be somebody that people enjoy being around. And it's not that you have to be the next ninja. You just have to be you and you have to be willing to do the least amount of work, at least that it takes to do something that's quality, that's really beneficial for society that helps people. Yeah. And that's our goal, right? You always want to help people. You always make people feel better and, and, and stuff like that. That's what I do. I want to, I just want to, I, the, my big thing is I want to have fun. I want to have fun because if I'm having yep. fun and laughing at my jokes, someone out there is laughing at my jokes too. And I'm hoping, yeah. but I'll, either but, way, I'm laughing the hardest. That's all <laughs> and I know. At the, at the end of the day, it has to be something that's valuable for someone else. So if you're not doing, uh, or if you're not creating something with that in mind, then if people are enjoying your stuff, it's by accident. And it's never going to be as good by accident as it would be if you put some intentionality behind it. Why are people enjoying this? You know, how can I investigate that a, a bit more? 
Uh, how can I give more? How can I do things uh, uniquely, differently, that still capture the same heart of why people keep tuning in every week, every day, whatever the case may be? So um, you do have a, a little one, two years old, Lucy? I do, you, yep. You, you've got a wife? Mm -hmm. How do you balance everything? Uh, impossibly. So, yeah. um, full time job. Hard. I know you're a full time job too. Full time you job. Know. Yep. I, it, and I actually I heard you and Rod in the last episode talking about how once somebody gets married or has a kid, man, they gone. And it's <laughs> it's kind of true, honestly. Like I I look at how my life has changed since then, and it's tough uh, because your priorities, your life. I, just what's core to what's important to you changes and morphs so much. And it's something that as much as you can see it coming, you don't know how you're going to act when you're in that sphere, right? As something you want to, you, I'm not going to be that person, man. I'm not going to be that person. That's what you're telling yourself, right? Like, Everybody I'm says still, that. Everybody I'm, says gonna, that. <laughs> I'm still going to see my boys. I'm still going to go for a drink after work every once in a while. I'll still go to hockey. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to go to hockey and stuff. Yeah, Hint, yeah. It never happens. <laughs> but um, but the truth, something my wife and I talked a lot about as we were anticipating our, our kiddo entering the world was as much as I love you, as much as I know you, I don't know you as a mother or her saying, I don't know you as a father That's because really we've interesting. never been that before. It's a dynamic yeah. in our life that sure. We've seen that we've had that in our life, but I have never been a father. Um, and until the past two years where, where my daughter's been here. So, I mean, it, it, it's tough because in a way you have to be willing to, to do whatever it takes. Right. And, uh, it's not just a daughter that makes that happen, but in a, with, with a child who is a hundred percent dependent on you to survive, you have to be willing to, to lay some stuff down, some preferences. Um, I, I was actually talking with a buddy today who has two kids and he was saying, I, I don't think that I've had like a full night's sleep in, in years. And, you know, you never think that things are as hard as they are currently. But, uh, but anyway, as far as like, as far as juggling and maintaining balance in all those areas, you have to prioritize. Cause if you don't prioritize, then you just kind of float and you hope that things work out. Um, I, I've always heard that the, uh, the idea of balancing your life is a, is a myth. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't see the people that I really respect and want to be like as people who have a balanced marriage and a balanced work life. Like they're people who have like a really healthy, good marriage. They're people who are on fire for what they do. They're people who inspire others, you know, and that's more about being all into the things that matter most, I think. So like the things that matter most to me, honestly, are uh, are my wife and my daughter like nobody gets to impact their life as much as i do and i have to 100 percent own that uh, because i know i'm going to screw up regardless of how intentional and good i am in yeah series, that's so true i'm still going to mess up so i want to bring my best unequivocally and continue to try and make myself better for that and honestly like i really treat marriage as a training grounds for the rest of my life like i haven't committed my life to anyone like i have to my wife but the things I learn as far as how to love her, how to listen to her, how to provide for her, care for her, like they're all things that carry over into the rest of of, uh, of my relationships, my friendships. They may take on different forms, not be as extreme, but all the same principles apply. So really time I invest in my wife, if I choose and, and really think through it, is time invested in a lot of other people or how I can. Uh, and I'm sure she supports you. Like she knows that this podcast means a lot. So sure, yes, I, and she does know. Like, do you have certain days where you're like, I need this hour and a half. This is my hour and a yeah. half time for this, and and we get going. Yeah, yeah, we do. The, you know, every other week when I'm recording uh, with with a co-host, we'll figure out a time that works, and we'll look at our schedules and stuff. I will say that it is it's tough because my wife is not a gamer to any extent. Mm -hmm. uh, early in our marriage, we tried playing New Super Mario Brothers Wii together like once a week and it was the most frustrating thing for both of us because i wanted to just scream through the levels and she was very particular about every single jump and it was I, neither of us was having fun so we scrapped that that's um, pretty cool but though, it is because you know you know my girlfriend's uh, kind of the same way um you know yeah, we don't okay. play video games together we tried to play hearthstone once and it was just like 
it, it's difficult because it's just like you do this right. and this, like ah, you know, ah, like come on. Um, but um, that's not always a bad thing, you guys. You know what I mean? Like I think that's yeah. sometimes a good thing because I have had exes that were right into video games, and mm-hmm. you know, it it it's sometimes like video games not anymore, obviously, but um, they used to be my alone time you know like this is it's just my chill time i'm gonna play a little bit i'm super excited for this game i want to just play it so um it's exciting sometimes to have that yin and yang at something it's it's actually good i think when it keeps me balanced because gaming is a hobby it's something i really enjoy uh, but it is not the most important important part of my life you know it's it's not I don't think that gaming is going to define my life a hundred years from now when people are looking back on who I was. People will probably remember the podcast. Maybe they'll discover episodes yeah. and stuff. But I think the people that I've impacted the most aren't going to remember any of that. So, so for me, honestly, it does help me stay grounded that, hey, this is something fun. This is something I do. It's about more than just enjoying the mechanics of a game. It really is about the community that we've created around this content um but uh but there's more to it than just that Uh, so it's it can be an advantage if you treat it as such if i wanted to hold it against my wife for our entire married life that she's not a gamer i could just as easily do that but i would be way more miserable than i am right now so uh, speaking of miserable have you ever gotten any hate mail have you ever gotten any bad reviews or anything like that and and... go on sorry Sorry, I actually did. Um, and it was a few months ago, I got my first negative iTunes review that I had oh, gotten wow. since um, since taking on the show. And it took me by surprise. I actually had to, af- after, you know, breathing a, a little bit and being like, whoa, I, I, I didn't expect that. It, it had been, a, I think, over a year since I had taken on the show. So it was like, okay, I went a year without any negative reviews. That's pretty good, you know. <laughs> um, but it was somebody who really just didn't uh, didn't enjoy the new direction I had taken with things. I mean, you mentioned earlier how how tough it, it was taking it on, trying to hold to the things that were and still make it my own at the same time. Um, I kind of stumbled into that more as as you know people started coming on and wanting to talk about topics that related to a gamer's life, but weren't necessarily uh, you know mechanics of Hearthstone or anything like that. People wanted to talk about broader topics because I always found ways to just sort of. Uh, get into that, mention it at least, uh, let people know that, you know, uh, that, that it was important. And I think that uh, I, I'm not totally sure, but or I, I can't remember off the top of my head because I didn't internalize it too much. But from what I remember, this person just didn't uh, didn't quite like that stance. Uh, they still said that they'd come back for the review episodes because they love those. So that's, oh, you nice. know, that's still silver lining. It's, um, it's funny because um, I got a from a YouTube video. It's my first negative YouTube video oh, uh, wow. comment. And okay. um, it's easier to tell a person, like I, I've talked to people and they're like, oh, I get them all the time, you know, like bigger people that have actually like thousands of people. And they're like, oh yeah, you know, sometimes they just, you know, don't don't hit me the right. And I'm like, how? Like, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> and then I got my first one and I was like, it... It honestly changed me Guess for what? you care. <laughs> yeah, it honestly changed me for a, a week or two until I realized. Sure. Oh yeah, you don't matter. You know, you don't yep. matter. Um, you know, your opinion is your opinion. Um, you know, sometimes it's it's funny. Um, how sometimes people feel like they have to tell you stuff that like, you know, it's not even like criticism. It's more of just blatant hate. You know, and. I don't mind taking criticism being like, Hey, you know what? This is blah, blah, blah. Or you did this this way, but like sure, blatant sure. hate. Holy shit. Is that rough to take? Right? Like that's a tough one. Yeah. Well, and I, I think that the, the thing that makes it a bitty because nobody likes being told something that's just blatantly not true about them as, as if it is, but yeah. by putting any kind of content out on the internet, you are absolutely exposing yourself to people saying whatever they want and them having the right to do that, you know, and doing it in public places that can typically hurt you. You know, somebody could leave a blatant hate uh, iTunes review and that would be on my podcast for all eternity. Actually, I think I could report it if it was really bad, but, um, but if it is something like, it's weird though, like say Twitch streaming, it's the only place people are talking about you in front of you. 
Do you know what I mean? Totally, like it's, yeah. It's mm-hmm. not like, you know, it, it's not like people are talking behind your back or anything. It's like I'm literally seeing you calling me a piece of garbage. Right, like, but they're still hiding behind a moniker, right? Oh, for and sure. Then, and unless they built up a relationship with you, which is somebody who would never do something like that, they may have created some fake account. They're out trying to make you feel as miserable as they feel and but uh, even trying ju- to mess even with just you. just like little and, things, even like, oh, he should have yeah. done this or, you know, uh, I don't think he's going to do it like this. And you know what I mean? It's even like, uh, I'm right here. You know, it's kind of weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird sometimes. Yeah. That's something we don't really think about, but um, it, it, it's something that it, it's there, right? Like it's, mm-hmm. it, it, it is, it's good and bad. It's really good and bad. And it's a weird dynamic. We've never had this dynamic in um, anywhere in the lifetime of us right like unless someone's talking shit or saying something like um it it is very very weird and and in a good way in a good way and it comes with the benefit of anyone having access to do what needs to be done to create something too right so like we mentioned the toshiba laptop or like for for podcasting it's the anchor app uh if you have that and a set of headphones you can make your your podcast for free starting tonight you know um but the, that bar being low for anyone to join means also that anybody can jump in and criticize you. So you get some strengths. You also get some pitfalls. It's part of uh, it, it keeps me from wishing for the good old days or wishing for some certain other time, because as we're as we're gaining things that are helpful, there are going to be some some things that aren't quite as helpful that come along with it. Yeah, that, that That's my big like that's my big thing, man, is. I hate hearing excuses of people. You know, I really Mm. do. I'd rather Mm. them be like, you know what? I just, I'm scared or I just can't do it. I just, it, I just don't have drive in it. But people being like, oh, I really wish I could do this. Like, I really wish I could podcast. Well, there's Anchor and it's free and you can just do it with like these headphones because they have a microphone attached. Yeah, Yeah, but it wouldn't be good. Yeah, but it wouldn't be good quality like the, uh, the other people's, you know, other people's would be a lot better and, you know, they wouldn't listen to mine. Well, you don't know until you do it. And, you know, mm-hmm. and the last thing, you know, th- th- this is like, I don't know if I've ever actually told this on air. Um, the way I got Geek Say was I always, um, I've been listening to podcasts since, I'm going to say 10 years, over 10 years I've been listening to podcasts. Wow. Like, or like since the beginning of time, I, like they came out, I, I've listened to podcasts because I've always had jobs that have been kind of on my own. And right. I like listening to them. It passes the time. Right. So uh, I always dreamed about becoming a video game blogger. Always dreamed about it. But I was always that person that was like, I can never do it. But I'd always have mm-hmm. an excuse, right? Like I, I, So like three, four years ago, I, uh, I, I decided I want to I wanna take a shot at it. I think I want to take a shot at it. And... I thought, you know what would be cool is a Canadian news video game pop culture website. So it's based around, because there's no such thing as a, like just Canadian uh, video game blog or something. Sure, uh, sure. No one take that, please. And, um, <laughs> you know, I, I thought that would be really cool. And I was thinking of names, and I was like, I don't know. And then I thought of Geeks, eh? I was like, shit, that's, that's pretty cool, Geeks, eh? I like that. <laughs> and uh, I got the dot .com. And I have to tell you, I put no content on that, baby. Like, <laughs> a zero. And, you know, the further down the line, you know, the name did come into play. And, and it really shaped who I was as a content creator, as you can tell with my Canada shirt on right now. And how I talk all the time with A's. Uh, it, 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 it shaped me down the road. But at the time, I was just like... I can't do it. Like, where am I going to find news sources? Like, oh, I'm just going to steal them? And it's like, yeah, that's what people do. Like, they just, they find out news from other news places. And it was just, I was too lazy. And I didn't want to admit that to myself, though, right? I didn't want yeah. to be like, you know what? It, it, it's it's not me. It's the content. It's I don't have connections. Right. I don't have, and if I would have started back then, I bet you, you know, it would have still been good, right? It would have still been, it's all about, um, you know, with with you, like right now, I say um and ah a lot. Okay, so that's like my goal to become better. And eventually that'll go away as it is easier for me to talk and whatnot. But I'm in and that I club wanted to say just for the record. I, I just feel like if, if I would have just started this blog, uh-huh. I would have at least just 
ha I would have had it, right? Like I would have at right. least been like, I, I have this product. At least I tried it. Instead, I gave up right away. Right. And I think that I think that always followed me around because what I always wanted to be mm. was Giant Bombcast. I always right, wanted right. to be Giant Bombcast or Rebel FM or any of those uh, video game websites that I looked up to. And instead, I was too scared. I was too nervous. I was making excuses for myself. And I think in this day and age, the excuse people are going to give a lot is it's so saturated. What's the point? Podcast is saturated. Twitch is saturated. When, you know, there's Mixer. Mixer is not saturated at all. It has like... Right. You know, it has very few people, and I think I think if you're gonna start streaming and you and you're scared, go to Mixer. Try Mixer. You know, because I feel like right now it's at like the beginning stages of Twitch, and mm -hmm. that's really exciting. And same thing with Anchor, right? You want to do a podcast? Anchor's your baby. Do it. I I think that it, this hits on a deeper human thing where it's like, I I ask myself often, where do I want to be in ten years? Or who do I want to be in 30 years? Do I want to look back on today and wish that I had started something that I had a gut feeling could be fun or effective or create some some quality for people? Or do I want to try it and know for sure, well, that wasn't the right time or that wasn't a good idea or whatever. Like you get to control the life you live to a point, right? But I totally feel what you're saying that we tend to make way too many excuses we undervalue ourselves and we end yeah. up short selling the world from experiencing the beauty that's in each of us that could come out if we would just be willing to take some risks, try something different and learn from those and get better as a result from it. You're not going to get better by making excuses. You're going to get better at making excuses, which will make your life more miserable. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. How, how old are you, Andrew, if you don't mind me asking? I am 31 years old. I was trying to age. come up with something 87 smart, babies. But 87 babies. I'm the same age as you. So, you know, with you and having a kid, uh, I think it's easier for you to say, where am I want to be in five years, your goals. With me, I think once you get to like 25, it's very hard because in, in school, you're asked that a lot. And in school, you're just like, I want to become a chef. I want to become right, a right. nurse. But like, I think later on in life, we stop asking ourselves that nor answering that because it's very scary yes. because i think when you're 30 you aren't there's no set rules or guides totally and yeah. or like you know what i mean you're already done school you're kind of at a job do you want like do you want to actually think about where you're going to be in five years with that job and you probably mm -hmm. might you might hate that job so you're like i don't want to be there in five years but i don't have a plan to get out of this job in five <laughs> right. years so right Am I really going to be there? Or it's like, I get paid so friggin' well. Why would I leave this job? So in five years, where will I be? I'll be at this job working night shifts and day shifts. I don't care. It's mills, right. you know? Um, and that's why for me, the question is less about what, where do I want to be or what do I want to be doing and more about who do I want to be? Because the journey to becoming who you want to be can take on a million different shapes. Um, and it's very flexible. I, you know, the best laid plans, there's some kind of quip that you don't make plans too tightly or, so, or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but when I, when I stop and think about the, the qualities that I wish I had when I turned 30, that I feel like I don't have yet. Um, I, I haven't been intentional for a lot of my life in pursuing those things. So I can either just say it's a waste or I guess that doesn't work, or I can try and adjust things. I can say, what if I'm more intentional about this? What if I'm bringing other people like my wife or, or my, my besties or, you know, my boss into those conversations, then maybe I can become a little bit more in line because yeah, it's a great area as far as what do you accomplish after middle school? It's high school after high school, typically it's college or trade school or something. But then once you're out of that, I, some people stay in grad school and doctorate school because they don't know any other way. Um, but for me, it ended up being a, a much more gray area. And I've had uh, a few different careers, worked for several different people, and I'm still on the journey of discovering all of that. But I tell you what, I'm having a lot of fun and I'm regretting a lot less because I'm choosing to say yes and be intentional with my life rather than treating everything like it's a happenstance. It's... It's very scary for us nowadays at 30, at 25 even, to try to think of five years and to 
even think of the year, right? Like you, you set yeah. these goals. You know, they say the worst goals are New Year's goals because you know oh, you're yeah. going to qu- quit them. Like something about like 90% are quit within the first month. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I like to, like, I take streaming like I do with any sort of goal I have in life. You, you pick your big goal. And then you start figuring out what the goal is to get to the big goal. You know, sure. so, so you, okay, what's my goal as a Twitch streamer? Partner. Obvi- uh, you know, that's like, that's the uh, holy right, right. grail, right? So, right. okay, what do I have to do to get there? One, I want one consistent viewer. Okay, yes, great. Absolutely. That. You know, affiliate. You know, gaining gaining some subs. Do, do, you know what I mean? And then mm-hmm. going up and up where I feel like people are just like, here, affiliate. And partner. That's the idea. That's my go- game plan, you know? And I think, yeah. um, see, like, these ums, man, I gotta get rid of them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> see? It's okay, man. Yeah, I know. Uh, so, I think people need to think more smaller scale when it comes to content creation. And I think people need to really step out of their comfort zone with just trying stuff. I wouldn't have totally done this agree. podcast uh if it wasn't for just me thinking that i could do it and maybe just trying the first episode and it kind of getting some good feedback and then being like okay i'll try it again why not you know i wouldn't yeah. let oh there's already podcasts like this out there there's already this out there you can set your aims really high and keep them high while still looking towards some achievable goals that get you along in that journey and I think it's really important also to celebrate those milestones along the way. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't think there's anybody who's trying to be a Twitch streamer who would say that one recurring viewer is something to shout from the mountaintops to. But to somebody who just started yesterday, that actually is a big deal because that yeah. could be your biggest fan. That could be somebody who's actually going to lay a foundation for other uh, viewers who ends up being a mod, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you never know the potential from the little small steps that will get you there. Don't just excuse things away because you can't get signed to some huge, uh, you know, record label and your band's playing at the pub down the street every week or something, you know? Uh, I think you have to celebrate them not only, not only with yourself, but with the community. I'm, I'm I'm very much about uh, making big deals about things. You know, I celebrated my one year, getting my uh sub button you know that's a big milestone having a sub button totally. for one year i want to celebrate that you know mm-hmm. my birthday i want to celebrate my birthday i want to celebrate being affiliated i want to celebrate it's my anniversary stream we're going to celebrate because every day we're continuing to do this we have to be proud and happy and you have to show it you know you don't have to hope to have 20,000 people come but you just want to show, like, look at look at where we're doing. We've got we've we've done it for two years. We've done it for a year. We've done it for six months. We got the affiliate ship. We've got five consistent viewers. Like, let's celebrate. I just I just don't know. Um, sometimes people go overboard. Obviously, some people go a little crazy. But I I think <laughs> there are some reasons to to celebrate. You are in social media marketing. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, that's my day job. What do you think the state of promoting a podcast, a stream, any content creation, what do you feel like people get right? And what do you think people get severely wrong? (laughs) Um, Honestly, I feel like it's the same stuff that's been happening for years. I'm just experiencing it on a deeper level. I think that a lot of people assume that if you create a social media account, people will just flock to it. and That's very, 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 very wrong. I think that what social media does well is it creates opportunity for people who want to have conversations that may not have been able to have them without social media to have them. And so any any content that you're creating, whether it's a specific video game or a hobby or education or something like that, there are people on the internet who are talking about that thing on social media. It could be a Facebook group where they're happening. It could be a hashtag that they're using on Twitter. Regardless, I think that people really feel like they just create something and then they're a monolith. That It's not a if you build it, they will come kind of thing. 
It's a, yeah. you build it, you work on it, but you go out and connect authentically with people, not just asking them for a quick, uh, will you follow this? Or, you know, will you follow me? Will you, you know, follow uh, for listen follow. to my show? Follow for yeah, follow. That, that stuff, yeah. it's, it just doesn't work. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out. But when you are really seeking authentic relationships, you will find people who are willing to have those also. And it just, it, it comes in meeting people where they're at. I heard somebody say once that you have to be willing, uh, especially in like the entrepreneurial world today, to give away a lot of stuff for free before you ever expect anything in return. Gary and Vee. That's Gary So Vee. when you start any kind of content yeah. production, you better be making zero dollars on it. You better do it for the love and you better find other people who are, you know, who love it as well. Um, but with time, with consistency, you'll find out why people like what you do. And if you're creating relationships with people, they will listen. And, you know, I think I started listening to Tier 5, Rod Johnson's podcast. I don't want to talk about him. I don't want to talk about him. That's totally that fair. Okay. Well, I, I won't mention his name. But <laughs> I think, honestly, I started listening to it because he reached out to me and we started talking on Twitter. I think actually he jumped on my Twitch stream one time and I was like, hey, I've heard of you. I know you have a podcast. I need to go check it out. And I did after that. And we've become buddies since then. I listen to his show every week. And that's just a very small example. But as you really start to find those people who have the same similar hobbies and just meet them, meet them where they're at, give them free value, not expecting anything in return. I, some people would say it's the universe returning it to you. I don't know that that's true as much as it is like when you receive, you want to give. Like that's, that's part of how we're wired as humans that, and it's not even an obligation thing half the time. It's like, oh man, you're actually a really cool guy because you did this. I want to get to know you better. What, what stuff do you create? It, it's, it's one of those things where you're meeting, like I always tell people, okay, say you're playing, like if you're playing Fortnite or PUBG or any of the top five, especially Hearthstone too, it's in the top five, I consider it. It's so saturated that you have to kind of go out into the ether, into the podcast world, into the forums, into the small communities, and you have to do that much work, more work if you want to hit it big in, say, Fortnite or uh, PUBG right. or anyone. Uh, you know, you really have to, like, you have to do more than what the rest of the 80% that are on zero to three people are doing you have to do mm -hmm. that much more you have to make it so i'm on the reddits i'm on their uh, their community forum so when people see your name maybe come across once in the blue moon they'll be like i know that name from somewhere let's just click on it and that's the yeah. other thing you can't bring a horse to water and make it drink so you know <laughs> it, it doesn't matter the hosts you know what i mean like it doesn't matter how many people i host you with you host me with if if you're not making the right content or if you're not talking because you don't think anyone's going to be showing up today they're not going to follow you. Mm -hmm. And with, I, I really like, there's there's games that, like, my bread and butter, if I was starting to do Mixer or streaming, is like 10,000 people to like 3,000 people. Those games, right? Like those, it has a, a solid community in it, yet it's it's not too saturated. So, and, and it's easy for you to, A, figure out who the top streamers are, get involved kind of in their chat authentically, not being like, hey, you know, I just started streaming. I'd love to play with you. And, you know, it, right. it's, it's more of just people, especially that have been doing this a long time, can tell if you're here <laughs> authentically to to for for you to get something out of me or if you really are interested in me. And I can tell and, you, you know, that right away. It's funny that I, I think that the people who have sort of come up out of nowhere, even just in, in my little niche of the, the Hearthstone podcast world, the, the listeners that I know, I don't think they're actually looking for anything in return. Like they don't have a show or a Twitch stream or anything like that. They're people who they authentically connect because that's what they came for. You know? And yeah. most people who are coming to consume content I would argue either want that or don't realize that they want it because as human beings, we all need deep connection with people. 
And the internet's opened up a whole new way to do that in a positive way and a whole new way to do that in a negative way. I, I don't want to belabor what we've talked about already. No. But, um, I, but I think that there's something to learn. If you're trying to hustle and create an audience for something that you're creating, tap into the mind of somebody who is not creating and do what they would do. They would probably be really interested in a different content creator in your space. They would want to get to know them. They would want to listen. They would want to write into the show. They would want to do different things. And uh, they would want to offer any help that they could in different ways. So find the ways to do that. And then you're not putting on a show where you're pretending to be authentic. Like you said, people sniff right through that. Yeah, you can you can you can sniff through like especially other creators to other creators, right? Like if I, if, if I made a, a Hearthstone podcast today and then I mm -hmm. came to you and I was like, "Oh, hey bud, like I just I have a Hearthstone podcast. What's up, man?" You know what I mean? Like just the way they interact with you is right away sure. you can tell if they're there for they want a piece of you or if they're there to be like, "I love your show, man." It, it, you know, there's a difference um between, you know, I've gotten friends and I've gotten uh, big contacts uh, when I was smaller because I honestly emailed them and all I said was, I don't want anything from you. I just mm -hmm. want to know your story and how you got to where you are. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not looking for shout outs. I'm not looking for hosts. I'm just starting out and I want, I want some advice. If, if you have any advice or how you got to where you are, just give me like, do you have a roadmap or something? You know, yeah. right there, I put it out in the open. I'm not... I'm not looking for anything. I don't want anything from you. I just the only thing I want is some of some maybe some 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 sort of guidance or 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 roadmap because it's tough and I know that. I know that. Yeah. And at least now I have like uh, you know I get that and and I'm not big. I'm not saying I'm big. I'm just saying I do no. get that. And it's nice now I could be like, "You know what? Go watch Creator Investigator. You know, go listen to him. You know, while you're doing <laughs> right. work." You know, it's it's me or my guest ranting about something, and you can piecemeal something about that. But I think the main the main thing here is right now there's so much content now that you can just piecemeal what you like and what you don't like, and especially watching streamers. Right? You can be like, I don't like that stream. Why didn't I yeah, like that I'm stream? Done. Or I didn't like yeah. that podcast. Why didn't I like the podcast? That guy's voice was too high. Or his the host's voice was super high. The guest was super low. It was mixed wrong. And we were talking about this earlier with the, the R word. Um, the rod. Uh, um, how, <laughs> how he went through so much struggle just trying to make the podcast. Yeah. And learn. And you just got to learn on the fly. And you got to let not let it deter you but you got to understand that there's going to be a big learning process and uh you got to celebrate those big accomplishments yeah adopting a learner spirit will help you so much and it's okay to want to create great content and to learn and always consistently get better but be okay if it's not perfect because if you're waiting for it to be perfect you will never create anything and oh, yeah. the it's, world it's... will be a worse place because of that so I always, I always do a, a final question here. I always do it the same, and it, it's always a good one. Here we go. Mm -hmm. If you were to start, if oh, sorry, if you were to go back in time, right now to when you first started, what would you tell yourself? Oh man, um, I would tell myself. Gosh, it's it sounds so cheap, but it's true you have to be yourself like you if you try to be something that you're not it's it just doesn't work like on any level you don't enjoy who you are no one enjoys listening to, to who you're trying to be and the the quicker and more deeply you can tap into the unique things about you that haven't been explored yet in the niche that you're going after uh, the things that you're really passionate about, even if it seems like there's no crossroads where those things meet, um, you're going to discover something that is needed and that will help make people's lives better. Um, I think that that's what I would tell myself. That's what I would tell anybody who's kind of on the edge, uh, really, who's maybe, you know, checking out this podcast, thinking about creating something. That's that's the biggest thing that I could I could leave you with. I think that's uh, that's really good. 
you know, if I started streaming with a Jason Voorhees mask on and I thought that was <laughs> going to be it, you have to think to yourself, I'm going to have to wear this mask for the rest of my life or I'm this character right. for the rest of the time I'm streaming. People know me. That's that's ridiculous. So I, I get where you're coming from. I do think that part of the journey is being comfortable with yourself in the role as a content creator also. So okay. um, like super, super, I know I've said this a lot. I This is the other piece that I would say though, is just be patient with yourself. Like don't expect the moon on a silver platter the first time. Like as even if you got it as right as you possibly could of being yourself on the very first thing you create, you'll be 20 episodes or 20 streams down the line and you'll look back on the first one and think, Oh man, I didn't understand then what I did now, right? It's yeah. it's a constant learning process. So, be uh, just be kind to yourself in that process, and be kind to other people. Offer the gift only you can give others, which is you. If people wanted to find you, where would they find you? You can mostly find me on uh, on Twitter at Andrews Living, especially now that uh, Boomsday Project is being revealed. I'm on there talking about just about every card before we record our Behemoth episodes. And if you'd like to check out the Happy Hearthstone, you can search anywhere podcasts are found, or you can go to the happyhearthstone.com to check out uh, some blog posts and uh, more info about me, the show, and everything in between. Um, guys, thank you so much for being here. Uh, it would mean a lot to me if you guys uh, leave some five-star reviews on iTunes or any other podcast thing. I, I don't think I've started saying that until last episode, but I found out that's a thing for podcasts. So please it's important. start doing that for me and Andrew. It would mean a lot to me, guys. Uh, you can find me, guys, at Twitch. I'm Geeksay. On YouTube, I'm Geeksay. And on Twitter, I'm Geeksay with an extra H. I just want to say thank you guys so much for being here. It's episode 23. It means a lot to me. And Andrew, thank you for being a part of this. It's been an honor. Thanks so much for having me, man. Love what you're doing here. No problem. Dude, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. See you guys. <laughs>